no problem. Okay, um, so I guess it's uh, probably about time to get it because it's show on the road. So um, I'm Colin Dixon. I am the chair of the technical steering committee for Open Daylight, which means that I get to try to make it easier for people like Flavio to actually get things done. Um, and so Flavio is going to do a quick demo at some point, but um, and then um, Kyle, presumably everybody knows. Do I need to introduce Kyle? <laughs> Hi. Uh, um, so uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm the Neutron PTL. Uh, I'm also the chief technologist for open source networking at HP. And so. I'm Flavio. I'm the OVSDB project commuter in Open Daylight. So, so cool. So, so really what we wanted to talk about today was really just sort of open stack and open daylight and how the two of them interact, what's the state of things, um, what you can do with them, give you a demo of what's working now, um, give you some idea of what's coming in the future, um, and basically take your questions. Um, my hope is to be done with 10 minutes of time for questions. Um, and, and it'll be good because I think there's going to be more, more dialogue is more better. Um, and so we're going to first talk a little, about, a little bit about what Open Daylight is, talk about what support there is for it in OpenStack. Uh, Flavio's going to do a demo. We'll talk about future plans and I'll take questions. So Open Daylight is an open source software project under the Linux Foundation with the goal of furthering the adoption and innovation of software-defined networking through the creation of a common industry-supported platform. It's basically OpenStack, but solely focused on networking. <laughs> That's the best model that I can come up with for it. And so we, we have three models for what it is, three goals of what we want to do. We want to develop code, actually build an SDN controller that basically lets you go out there and do the things you want to do with software-defined networking, whether it's network virtualization, support OpenStack, um, enable software-defined WANs, do traffic optimization, whatever it is you can imagine doing, we want to try and build code to help you go and build solutions that do that. Uh, we want acceptance. We want people to actually pick this up and use it in products and actually directly. Um, and we're meeting, we're having a, a fair degree of success there. And the last thing is community, which I don't really need to tell you guys about. But you know, essentially, we need the community of people that will maintain, enhance, and build value around it. Um, and so the thing to take away from this is it's really a lot like OpenStack. It's just we have a different focus um, and, uh, you know, and spend more time in that area. Um, so, so what makes it different from every other big open source recently put on GitHub SDN controller that also supports um, OpenStack. It seems like there's about two a week these days. Um, so there's a couple. One of them is that we have a really inclusive view of SDN. Um, we have support for SNMP, BGP, PCEP, COPS, PCMM, LISP, NetConf, OpFlex, and the list goes on. And also OpenFlow and OVSDB, which is what you know everybody, which is you know what what sort of the, the jour is. And so there's huge array of things available for you to be able to go play with in this space. And that's and something we'll show in an architecture slide later. That's something which it can provide a lot of value to, which is if you just want an OpenStack provide, networking Neutron provider, you can load it up and do that. But if you want to do other things, you, there's a lot of other stuff there that you can do interesting things. If you want to pull SNMP counters and have that feedback into what you're doing, you can do that because there's an SNMP plugin built in. Um, and then we have a really, really broad and engaged community across a huge number of different companies. Um, I, the, as of, I think, a couple of, like a week ago, it was 3,200 commits across 150 contributors in the last 30 days. Um, so this is a pretty big, vibrant community from a bunch of different companies. It's something like 15 or 20 different companies represented in the 150 contributors, maybe more. Um, and so and the last thing is, again, it's, it's a lot like OpenStack. It's just a slightly different focus. And we'd really like to be able to provide you know, things that will make OpenStack even better. Um, so um, we've had three different releases. Um, we've had Hydrogen, which is the first release in February of 2014, Helium, which is the most recent release, which came out about eight months ago, and uh, next month, Lithium is going to come out, uh, which is going to be, and Lithium is really more of a um, stability release um, uh, compared to Helium was a huge step away from Hydrogen. Lithium is more of a let's tweak things and make it actually work. Um, and so Flavio is going to show you some of the coolness that came out of that. Um, who is Open Daylight? It's a bunch of companies. You recognize most of these companies. It's your NASCAR slide. Um, uh, it, it, this is who it really is. <laughs> uh, this is the last developer summit we had. Um, it's not quite as big as this, but it's, uh, there's a bunch of people. And these are really, it really is. Um, it's like any open source project, it's who shows up and does the work. Um, and we're running something like 300 commits a week over 12 months, about 150 contributors over any 30-day period, and something like 300, 400 contributors overall, um, building something like 2.5 million lines of code. 
Um, so it's cool. We have a really, 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 really strong integration and testing community, which is, as you, I don't have to tell anybody here, that is really critical. I mean, actually, the tests matter more than the code. Um, so I, again, I sort of think it's a, it's a nice sister project to Open Daylight. If you were going to say, what is the closest thing to, to OpenStack? What is the closest thing to OpenStack and networking? It really is Open Daylight. Um, and I'm going to pass it to Kyle to talk about OpenStack support <coughs> Open Daylight. Great. So thanks for that great overview of, of Open Daylight. So, so I think we, we've, I've kind of given like a version of this talk at the last couple of summits. Um, so the integration of OpenStack and Open Daylight, uh, this is kind of what, this is what it looks like, right? So we, we have an ML2 mechanism driver. And what we've done is uh, there was a talk, or a panel yesterday on plug-in decomposition. So the, the back-end logic of this has been decomposed into a StackForge project soon to be pulled back under the Neutron tent. Um, and so that's where that code lives. Uh, we also, uh, we actually have uh, an L3 service plugin as well that's a part of that, and we have an experimental uh, implementation of, of load balancing as well that's out there that's in, it's experimental at this point, but, it, but it's out there. Um, and so in Helium, as this says, we have three implementations of this on the, on the, on the open daylight side. We have OVSDB, there's the open contrail implementation, and there's the VTN project as well. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, additional implementations that are coming in Lithium. Uh, because there was, some, there was some work done on the open daylight side as well to, to split out this Neutron service. So the way that it works is we essentially proxy the API calls across from OpenStack Neutron over to open daylight. And that chunk of code on the open daylight side was, was pulled out of the controller project into its own project. And, and now we're seeing a bunch of implementations of that on the open daylight side as well of the Neutron APIs over there. Um, so like it says, we do support some advanced services. Uh, there's some light support for load balancing there, but we do do the, the L3 routing as well, which Flavio is going to demo in the, in the demo here as well. So with that high-level overview, I think we'll flip over to, to the right. demo now. Cool. <coughs> well, I guess I'll start with this. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. There we go. Sorry about that. And... Um, just so you know. This is a picture of my knee. <laughs> and uh, this was uh, an outcome of a ski trip. And uh, in case the live demo doesn't go so well, just know I'm a little screwed up. So, so I, I just want to tell people that was not the result of integrating with Open Daylight and OpenStack. There was nothing, no, no. I would have been safer if I was doing that instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So the demo I want to put together today is pretty much showing this it's in, a, in a nutshell. It's a Neutron ML2 plugin. And think about, for the OpenStack folks in the room, the L2 agent and the L3 agent kind of taking that responsibility away from OpenStack and moving it into Open Daylight. So Open Daylight, just delegating that <coughs> to Open Daylight and through the Neutron ML2 plugin, you basically get the L2 population and the DVR, so basically distributed ARP and uh, distributed routing uh, functionality out of this. You know? And the way it works is, <clears throat> as you can see on the bottom end, we have a, an OVSTB, a native OVSTB library that can create, remove bridges, add, remove ports through OVSTB natively. And once you do that, you have the OpenFlow plugin on the other side, which can add you know, all the OpenFlow rules to really make it look and behave like a router would respond to ARP and uh, decrease TTL and route the thing from segmentation ID A to segmentation ID B, all through OpenFlow. So that's that. I just got my notes here to make sure I don't miss any points. <laughs> um, you guys follow so far? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> um, uh, what I'm going to do in the demo is pretty much I'm going to, this is my laptop here, and I have Open Daylight running. <clears throat> And then I stamp I stand out three VMs, which are going to be my nodes. And uh, inside those nodes, I have <clears throat> just an, a host network that interconnects them like that. Just, uh, yeah, just the backbone and the, the underlay network from an you know, OpenStack perspective. And then you have the uh, little bit of Inception movie here, the VMs inside VMs kind of going on. And uh, with those nested VMs, you're then going to have the, uh, the overlay network. Basically, through OVSDB, we can have tunnels created on demand between these nodes so they can talk VXLAN, in this case, across each other. And that's how you maintain the tenant isolation. So that. So 
to drive all this, I have this terminal window here. And you guys see this okay? I can make it bigger. Um, this, these are my VMs. Somebody in the back, tell me if you can see it. Make it bigger? <laughs> all right. All right, I have a bunch of tabs. So basically, this, those are the three VMs that we're using as nodes. And as you can see up here on the top, on the tabs here, apologize. Bigger. Definitely bigger. All right, <laughs> bigger it is. So this is the control node. Like this. Is that all right? <clears throat> and uh, what I have so far is uh, basically the stack done. I don't have any, any v, um, subnets or anything created. In fact, um, on these other two windows here, sorry if I'm jumping around a little bit, I have uh, this TCP dump that's pretty much going to show us all the communication between open daylight and neutron ML2. And this is just, just you know, for debugging purposes, just so you can see what's happening. So it's, you know it's a real demo. I'm going to do a, a curl get of networks, which you can't see probably. <laughs> And then you can see on the other side, you know, just the TCP dump that you really got going to cross open daylight and back. <coughs> okay. Um, that's that. So with that, and that's the open daylight carafe uh, screen. Um, so with that, I'm going to go and have another set of cheat sheets here. And this should be very, uh, you know, something you guys see every day. I'm just creating the first subnet. I'm just going to go to my control node here and do that. And what I'm doing here is I'm creating the net and the subnet with the DHCP. That is the DHCP service is from OpenStack. So uh, the very first thing you see here is if I do OVS and just show the ports. And I know how familiar with OVS you guys are. And <clears throat> this just looks a little weird. Just let me know and can ask me questions. But basically, because of the DHCP service and <clears throat> the first subnet I created, now we have these two tunnel ports created OVS, through the OVSDB interface. We just created the two tunnels between where the control node is and the compute nodes are. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to go and create the second network just because it's just exactly the same thing. Here. Um, so one point I want to make at this point, uh, I have the two networks and I have these ports. And I'm doing this on the control node, but I can do this on the other ones as well. And you can see that <clears throat> the DHCP uh, service created a port here. Those are the tap ports they're there for. And uh, if, you, if you look in, the, in it this way, you can see that um, the uh, port 4, e 4 is the one DHCP, and the VXLAN port is the other one. Okay. Um, now I'm going to create the router. It's a neutron router just connecting the two subnets. And I'll, I'll have a picture for that just so you guys see right, right away. So basically, what I've done is this I just put the router together. And like I said, it's a distributed router approach. Every, every OVS, you know, in every compute node has its own table rules that allows it to do the routing. So you essentially are doing what DVR does, you know, in this case, east west. Um, okay. And one, not, one more thing interesting to notice is if I try to print the ports, uh, because it's, a, it's not a real router, we're not really creating ports in it, you don't see new ports added to the OVS at this level. All the magic happens to the, uh, the pipeline table to the open, uh, open flow rules, which I'll show you in a little bit. Is that making sense so far? How's it going, guys? Am I losing you, or is that okay? All right. <clears throat> so. Yeah, so just get that there. And then I'll just go ahead and create my, uh, my first set of VMs here. And I'll get to the, uh, <coughs> my blanks. This is just the three Nova boots coming up. And I uh, actually don't have that here, but I can start one real quick. This might be actually a good time for me to start to introduce you guys to the, uh, the concept of the pipeline. So yeah, so we're gonna create these VMs and then I'm gonna add some more VMs. And so in open daylight, <clears throat> the OVSDB network implementation has this concept of pipelining. So you can have multiple services. In other words, 
the ARP responder and the L3 forwarding, and as you can see here, we have the inbound NAT for the north and south um, processing. Um, yes. I'm not sure, can I make this bigger? Yes. Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> Even more. Even more, all right. Press the green button and we'll make yeah. it full screen. All right, let's just go full. Oh, that's, uh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that, that did not help, sorry. Anyways, I don't want to delve into this too much, but it's basically a way within the OVSDB network to have this, this chaining functionality where you can really do multi-stages. And in fact, you do a multi-stage here. We have, by default, the table 110 doing the L2 forwarding, which will be traffic across uh, nodes, subnets on this, uh, 10 VMs on the same subnet, whether they are in the same node or not. <clears throat> and the L3 uh, processing that happens before. And the outcome of, once you're done with table 70 here in this case, you are basically just doing L2 forwarding. That's why they chain it so nicely like that. Um, so if we just do a Nova list here, you just see those three. I just might as well go ahead and start the grand finale and move on you guys to the next. So I'm just going to create another bunch of VMs here. Um, while this is happening, one thing I wanted to show you is just the communication back and forth going on between um, OpenStack and Open Daylight. You can kind of see it through here. And I can dump the networks. You see the networks I created? Yeah, well, just there, just the standard OpenStack things you guys do every day in and out. So while it's fundamentally different is just delegation of the service to a, a third party. Instead of doing all this magic in OpenStack, you really are using OpenStack to its strengths, which to me, it's service API, not the service itself. And I think it's not the first time people use it that right, way. Right, and we've, we've gotten rid of the agents in this case too, right? Right, yeah. yeah. You just didn't enable them. They're still there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you're not yeah, going yeah, there. Yeah. But you can use you, them if you want. You can totally use them if you want. Yeah. It's life's full of choices. So, yeah. So, um, I just want to show you the, so I, like, like to your point, Kyle, there's no yeah. namespaces created for the router in this case. Everything right. is just there. Because um, typically you'd be using the namespaces, the L3 agent is creating the namespaces. And exactly. Uses that, right? Yeah. So just show you the, the actual table here. So this is, this is the, the open flow table that's maintained by Open Daylight. And uh, basically, the, um, we'll talk a little bit about table 20, which is the ARP responder table. So it looks, like this really long convoluted table. And in a way it is, it's one of the more complex rules because we really are taking an ARP packet and moving the fields around, shoving in the ARP response field in the operation and sending it back where it came from. So you really are doing an ARP responder without using a real ARP responder. You're just using OpenFlow magic for it. Just as you are on a, so this is table 20, on a table 60 here. And just Sorry if you guys cannot read it, but you basically are um, mapping on a segmentation ID and a destination network and doing the things a router would do. You decrease DTL and you put in the, uh, the MAC address of the router interface, you know, and you move on to the next table and off goes the pipeline. And on table 70, you're pretty much doing the reverse ARP. Notice that the, the router is not doing any ARPing. It's just, it knows what the IP and it knows what MAC it is. So it just puts the MAC right there as part of the, the, the pipeline flow. And this is all distributed. So you have a completely distributed view of the world, no matter which node you're in. So this is the compute node, just to prove point. So at this point, I'm just going to get inside one of the namespaces and just do an infamous test of all mothers, <laughs> the pingo. So I'm just pinging across from every node to other node and it's doing the route and you can even get into the VMs and look at the ARP table and life is the same for all of them. Um, and I guess the last piece of uh, thing I wanted to show you is just, well, I have Wireshark running. Uh, and you can see here that these are the uh, encapsulated packets, right? So I'm using VXLAN, so in this case, let me stop the scrolling here and uh, just decode, decode this packet so you can see a little better. Decode as VXLAN. <clears throat> and you can see it right here, the ICMP. And the more interestingly, you can see the, the packets on the underlay uh, being there in the VXLAN header and then the packet on the overlay, just like you would 
in the real world. So, so and we support different tunnels, different engines, Absolutely. Gadgets, right? Absolutely. Whatever OVS has to offer, we yeah. leverage. OVS is, is, is the workhorse here, right? Open Daylight is, is taking all the direction from, from OpenStack and making it so it makes sense to OVS and managing it and distributing it. It has the global view. It's scalable. It's, you know, it's all, all the things we need it to do in the, in the SDN controller. That's what an SDN controller is, an SDN controller. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully and it makes sense, you guys. We have examples of this uh, setup in the stack for, I think we have example, uh, like if you want to try it with DevStack, right? Because Absolutely, example, yeah, yeah. So uh, what I use to stamp all these VMs, I'm just using Vagrant, and I have, you know, VirtualBox in this, in this laptop, and I actually written the gory details on how to do all this on your own. I'm hoping you guys try it out and, you know, and, and see how it goes, but it's all there, and it's very well, I'm thinking it's very well documented on how to do it. And just, uh, my goal here is to just give you a little different perspective before you get too convoluted into L2 agents and L3 agents and the BR interfaces and all that. I got a little lost yesterday. You were just watching all the, the gory details and maybe solving the problem in the right place, you can eliminate a whole lot of complexity, you know, and that's the only takeaway that I have when I, when I wanted to show you guys this. So, maybe, yeah. The, excuse me? Source that. So I don't think you have floating IPs set up for this. Right? Uh, correct, You're yeah, I'm doing that. just doing. Uh, yeah, I don't, have, I don't have north and south on this demo, I just have east yeah, and west. East so yeah, in that case, you would have seen a, a BREX. If you notice, my, uh, my nodes don't even have. BREX, so just the only one bridge. I don't have BR tunnel, by the way. In open daylight, this implementation, all the magic can be done through, uh, through just BR int. So, but you can do that. Absolutely, yeah. yeah that's, that's part of what we're doing, yeah. With the floating, whatever Neutron gives us, we can work with and translate it into the right OVS terms. But, and, but if it's It's if, if Neutron tells us that this IP address maps to that IP address, the internal to external. Exactly, so uh, I was gonna, sh on, the, on, this, on these rules, we really have two rules. We have the, the, the L3 rewrite for ingress and for egress. So we do know, depending on the OF, you know, and, and the IP address that it came in, what to do with it on the, way, on the other way out. The mapping is all there. It's, it's like, Open, open daylight has visibility of the whole thing. So when you have the whole picture in mind, you, you can do all these translations and all that. How do you get your return packets to route back and break the two Well, you have, you have addresses there from a common pool when you're using floating IPs. You know what the address is? Right. Right. Understood. Yes. So yeah, that, that you you're getting more. We can talk offline more about this, but it's definitely a north and south kind of discussion that you, you you're interested in, and it's not what I wanted to show it to you. IPv6. Like I said, <laughs> if OVS can handle it, and it does IPv6, so yeah, no, so. Correct, <laughs> correct, correct. There's a whole lot of fun things you can do. There's no shortage of it. <laughs> can you tell us about like the, the HA of the ODL itself? Uh, a question? Yeah. He wants yeah. to know about H, H so, so he's HA asking about ODL. HA, HA for ODL. ODL. Um, uh, I can take that. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll, I'll so, um, so Open Daylight, the, like, the core of Open Daylight is something we call the MD-SAL. Um, and the model driven service abstraction layer. And the MD SAL is, consists of basically three things. It is a data store, it is RPCs, and it is notifications. And we have implemented the Raft distributed consensus algorithm on top of Akka in Open Daylight. And that basically gives you a consistent view of the data store. So the data store is replicated and highly available. Um, and notifications and RPCs are also routed in the cluster in a mostly sane way. Um, and so that, so, so, so 
that core is what currently provides OVSDB, the OVSDB project, and that's different from, so the OVSDB network virtualization project is a project in open daylight which uses the OVSD protocol. Not to, just in case anybody is totally confused by that, I know that we've had problems with that in the past. Um, and basically that leverages those features. And so in, it, you know, it, it should be HA. I'm not sure if we've actually tested it under fire extensively, but that's sort of a significant focus over the course of the next couple of weeks as we run towards lithium is basically actually starting to shoot bullets at um, a bunch of our things that we need to understand exactly what the HA properties are. Um, so that's been a significant thrust. Uh, it's not done yet, but it is, um, there's a lot of, the, the underlying pieces are all there. Uh, you mean the OVSDB who, who? project? No, no, the HA capabilities and the distributed data. Uh, so that is by virtue, as you set up, a, stand, you, if you stand up Open Daylight in a three node cluster, you get it for free. There's a little bit of added complexity in standing up a three node cluster versus just, so if you just run Open Daylight, you download a zip file and you unzip it and you do dot slash bin carafe and you're done. Um, and there's a little bit more involved in setting up a cluster than that because there has to be. But my question is if you write the app as an L2 learning group or something else, it, do you need to explicitly call out the systems using HA? No, 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 you'll get, you'll get that. If you avoid doing stupid things, which um, you get it for free, you can always shoot yourself in the foot, but, but, it, but, but if you follow a reasonably straightforward set of guidelines, you get it for free. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if you thought about the scenario of a production workload running at scale of say 500 servers, what do you feel like are the main um, pieces of work that are kind of still ahead to unlock that scenario? So, so what are the pieces left to, to get to running this with 500 compute nodes? Yeah, I mean basically, you know, scalable, HA, high performant, um, can you know, like, as performant as some of the, um, the non-open source alternatives. So I think, I think you know, one of the pieces is what Colin was just talking about, right? We need to work, make sure that we can do the clustering. We gotta make sure how bulletproof that is. Testing. That. I, mean, I think it, it's really, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think there's anything fundamentally, I mean, I, I don't think there's anything fundamentally broken. Um, I think it's just a matter of shooting at it until, and seeing what breaks and iterating. And that's sort of, I think that's the, one of the big things going forward. And we would love people to come and help us sort of, you know, go through and do that um, uh, and, and iterate quickly. Um, and so, it, for all I know, it would work. Actually, I, I've been s pleasantly surprised with Open Daylight, where you know, despite not targeting scale in the first couple of releases as heavily as we have recently, we are scaling up to something like 400, 500 switches um, under our control. And so, it would not surprise me if you tested it that we can scale the 500 compute nodes today. Yeah, and I, and I think to that point, the other thing is that that especially during Lithium, we've really focused on testing and infrastructure and, and CI and that too. Yeah. You know, that's really been beefed up, so I think that, that the community as a whole has really done a good job there in focusing on that. You know, and and we've, we've learned a lot from what OpenStack has done as well. I think it's, uh, I think you made the comment that it was like, you know, the, the, the relation is there, and so there, the, we've learned a lot of things there. Thanks. Yeah, Nick. So you were just talking about scaling. <clears throat> One of the scaling enhancements in OpenStack is DVR. What's the play here? That's actually interesting because DVR, it is exactly what we do. It just, it just naturally fit in a way because you have the SDN controllers and you have all these OVS instances. So we are, we are scaling already. We are doing exactly what DVR does, just using OVS. Basically, I don't know if, if it made sense when I was showing you those rules, but those rules are not just in one node. All nodes have a very uh, replica of that, the one that makes sense for it locally, to do exactly that. So you are routing right on ingress, and you are, you know, you're doing exactly what DVR does in a sense, without having to, to have a real IP stack. And IPv6 fully supported, any features missing? As far as I know, it, it's, I mean, the bulk of the infrastructure is out there. I just don't think the OVSDB network is the, the lingering piece, just the translation part from what Neutron gives and what we need to give to OVS. So, so I, think, I think the answer is no, but it yes, probably, yes. it's probably a solid afternoon's work in order to work out the last it's, two bugs. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not an intentional thing. It's just, a, you know, again, you know, so we're, we're in the middle of, so I guess the thing which isn't mentioned here is that the lithium release is June 25th. Um, and we are sort of in the middle of our RC and testing cycle. And so the answer to a lot of things are, we've done a lot of feature development so far, and we have about a month, um, a month and a half of testing, which is gonna, we're gonna try to tease out a bunch of these things. 
So, so we, we have a few more. We'll get to you after. Sorry, these people. So I've got a question yeah. particularly, uh, especially for Kyle. Uh, so what's, what's the neutrons to community's reaction and the consensus in terms of collaborating with, uh, with the open data community, uh, you know, offloading this control ply and those things to, you know, out of band controller. So how does the uh, neutron community react? So, so I think that as far as the neutron community goes, there's actually an effort underway to, to kind, of, kind of embrace more of these, these open source options for neutron, right? And we're actually, we're likely to split the reference implementation currently in neutron out into a separate Git repository inside the Neutron tree as well. And a lot of these other backends are coming under the Neutron tent as well. Uh, so if there was the change in the, the governance of OpenStack more broadly to have this big tent model. So we've adopted the, the Neutron Stadium, we call it, right? And so we're, <laughs> we're letting people in as well. And so, you know, that's, that's basically we're providing people choice, I think, and Neutron can go back to being an API and DB layer. And, and the implementation of the SDN controllers can, can move over to those, I think, so. Yes. Yeah, Prakash from FutureWay. Uh, this is an extension of last question. Uh, of course, uh, Open Daylight likes every SDN controller to be underneath it. But if you want it peer, uh, what would be Neutron's uh, role in it? And what would, uh, how would, uh, you are uh, very open, I believe, Open Daylight. So we want to see you that you are also allowing peer interfacing to other SDN controller like Ono's Open Country rather underneath. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. We're not, yeah, yeah, so definitely. What, so what would you do to do that from Neutron as well as from ODL? So you want to run multiple SDN controllers at the same time. Absolutely. So, um, okay, so, so, so I was going to jump for, to answer the question to, to, to sort of this. So this is sort of the OpenStack view of Open Daylight oh, with the architecture. And, and, and sort of the point which I want, and, and so this is sort of how you might look at it. There's three different implementations in Helium, um, but there is a whole lot of other Open Daylight stuff around which you can go and leverage. And this is kind of cool because it means that if you just want to use um, uh, Neutron, you can ignore it. But if you want to do fancier things, you can imagine using NetConf in order to pull interface statuses and things like that. But uh, another key point is that there are drivers for things like BGP and, um, and, uh, and, and PSAP and, other, and sort of NetConf, other protocols which you can use to sort of peer east-west and segment your network if you wanted to. It's also the case that we haven't tested this, but there is nothing fundamentally stopping us from carving up the Neutron service logically so that way we actually have multiple different providers underneath it, including the ability to say pass that off. So just pa be a pass through for some subset of Neutron. But this whole federated peered controller thing is something which we're actively discussing. Um, and so I have a lot of you coulds and their support for this and not a whole lot of, hey, I've built it and run it and here's how you should do it. So, so even from the Neutron perspective though, you, you could do, in theory, the, if these are ML2 drivers, you could in theory have multiple SDN controllers. I think you'd have to ask yourself why you would want to do that. Maybe a better approach would be to, to set up uh, uh, regions or something and have different, uh, different installs of OpenStack used by different controllers. Or maybe if you just wanted to separate the physical and the virtual, you wanted two controllers, one for the physical, one for the virtual, you, something like that. But I'm, I'm not sure of the use case of you, running no, the three use controllers. Case is very for, simply from AT&T Domain 2.0, where you've got a global SDN controller, a, a local as well as a node controller. And the concept here is you can have hierarchical SDNs. So we wish to see the peer level availability, like if ODL is the main uh, SDN, uh, that B, and then you can have other underneath. But same way, if not ODN, let's say if ONOS is the uh, main one, mm -hmm. then how does ODL work with it? So it's a peer connected, east-west, like you already have some information so, on, uh, like example, Dragonflow, right? Now that improves the performance by 20% uh, already without uh, doing all this. So what I, how do you incorporate? So there are many issues which are peer level, not after going southbound and saying that, hey, you can connect anything here. It's not the solution. So, so, so we're not, looking we're at not, peer level. Yeah, yeah, right. So we're is, so we're not trying to like dictate anything, right? If someone wants to use Dragonflow, Onos, whatever, it's all about providing choice, right? If the community wants yeah. to converge on this, the sure. people working so, on all of these like to get together, that's great. So, yeah, so, 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 I think that I, is why interoperability is key for peer level 
So, so, I, so, so that's the, what I'm. The, the, sh the short do. version is that there isn't one that's actively developed and tested today. I think if anybody's interested, we would be happy to go do it. I think a lot of Very the pieces good. are there. That's what we want to hear. And then the um, and then the, the other thing which I want to say is, in general, when I've deployed systems like that, I have found that it is more useful to think of things as being siblings than peers, which is to say there is another entity above them that understands their relationship, and it's their responsibility to mediate their interaction. It's usually easier that way than it is to encode enough state in the peer relationship, but you can certainly do it a bunch of different ways. Okay, we'll take this gentleman up here first, and then we'll come back to the mic. We on the same one. That's a good question. It depends on what? So did, did, what, what, what version of ODL was the demo running? This is running a Helium release. Yes, yeah. yes. That we, we just not stay with nothing and leave him for me to feel good about showing it. Yeah. All the magic is known. You, the, yeah. <laughs> in yeah. fact, I yeah. actually I have pretty good uh, pages that I can point I think, to I think the, the, the scripts, to do this on your own. If the you like. scripts actually go out and download the latest Helium SR3 release and deploy it from the release downloads page, I believe. It's actually stable Helium, so SR4 one okay. of the kind of, but <laughs> you're right, you're right. Yeah, there's some bug fixes we've done along the way. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, Mike. Yep. So, so just to sharpen the, the question that was asked before about peering and siblings and other family relationships. So um, I, I think we want to sharpen the, the requirement. I actually liked was what Kyle was saying that uh, OpenStack does give you the ability to put things in different zones. And even if we go back to that slide that ATT publicly presented, um, and if we want to endorse all sorts of uh, regional uh, SDN controllers, it doesn't necessarily behoove us to, to actually go and, and um, say that what we need to focus as a community is more than one controller working in one area. And if people think differently about that, please, please call me. Thank, thanks, Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I have, uh, I have another question. Is, uh, we are using the OpenStack uh, uh, Ice House right now. So if we plan to use, uh, try to try out uh, the, uh, the open daylight. So which version uh, it, you, know, you recommend? So which open stack version is open daylight house? compatible with? Um, that's a good question. With, with Ice House, that's where we merged the plugin upstream the first time. OK. Uh, was Helium released then? I don't, when did Helium come out again? You guys Helium was February 2004. Uh, uh, for, for 14. 14. So. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, it might be no, October 2014. Okay. October 2014. Yeah. I mean, I guess the better the better answer is that test matrix is what we're working on right now. And, um, so. What's the intent? Yeah. Well, the, of the test matrix, right? Of no, 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 no. So, what's the goal? Are we go, are are we going to support Ice House and with, Juno with and Helium? I think the the goal is well, we need to be able to to articulate that. I think is that's the okay. goal. Yeah. So we can. I, that's, I, I, that's what I was asking, yeah. Flavio and, and, and I mean, Kyle. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, sorry, exactly. sorry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah. Talk to the man. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. If you want to talk about intent, find me later. Um, <laughs> uh, Bad intentions. <laughs> so so okay. cool. So, I think that's we're actually done now. I think. Are, are we, we up, over? Are we up well, time? We're, sorry. I, we have time for one more question if anyone wants, otherwise. Yeah, and the only thing I wanted to say oh, is. There's a question. Oh, go for it. In this demo, the DHCP server is the OpenStack service, just as you know it, running in the control node. So you can, right. Yes. Yeah, DHCP is still done by that agent, so you can deploy that agent as you normally would on multiple nodes or however yeah. many you want. Yep. Correct. One, yes, exactly. And Every subnet yeah. stamps out its own DHCPD, yeah. yes. So the last thing I wanted to add is um, if you're interested in this or you want to come help out or you want to let us know what it is that we can do to make your lives easier, um, come talk to us. We are a really nice, friendly community. We exist on the same IRC um, server as you guys do. Uh, you just have to hop over to Pound Open Daylight and, and look for us. And um, uh, and Java isn't as evil as people make it out to be, and we're happy to help people get up and started. Uh, so um, please come by and, and just let us know what we can do for you, or come help out and build sort of whatever cool features you want to see. Oh, and the, the Open Daylight Dinner tonight. Oh, and there's an Open Daylight Dinner tonight at, open, when is it? I don't remember, um, at some point. My phone knows there's, what it is. There's, there's a gathering tonight, if people are, if so people there is, are interested, uh, I think. 
It's and I can be able, I, I can look Phil's, it up in two seconds. Yeah, we have the design summit too. The ODL oh, community yeah. dinner well, is not, at yeah. Al Porto yeah. Restau um, Restaurante, and it is at 6.15 tonight. So if anybody wants to come, um, there's a place to RSVP if you search for it on the Open Daylight website. Um, Thank you. Perfect. Thank you.